Hi, welcome everyone. I'm um, here today with Dr. Thomas E. Levy, who is the author of a fantastic book called Primal Panacea, all about the amazing benefits of vitamin C, which I've actually been doing a trial of. So I wanted to talk to Dr. Levy to get his views on basically why we need it so much, why it can benefit different parts of our body and particularly um, skin health. So welcome Dr. Levy, thanks so much for being here with us. My pleasure, Kate. Um, so can I just start off by asking you, um, I actually watched uh, that Vitamin Summit too, which you were a part of, and I heard you say that the body's main fuel is vitamin C, Now, um, and also that you said there are about 19 different ways that it can actually help the immune system, so I wonder if you could maybe start off by telling us a bit more about that and why it's such a crucial vitamin. Well, <clears throat> vitamin C is in fact literally the fuel that the body runs on. But in order to appreciate that, it's important to understand what state results in health and what state results in disease. And that has everything to do with your balance between oxidation and reduction. Oxidation is when a biomolecule loses electrons. Reduction is when those electrons are restored. And at the tissue level and the organ level, when you oxidize a biomolecule and you take the electrons away, for the most part, you render that biomolecule functionless. It can no longer work. It can no longer do its normal uh, biological or physiological activity. And when an antioxidant, such as vitamin C, but not limited to vitamin C, can come along and redonate electrons to the oxidized biomolecule and bringing it back to what's called the reduced state, you restore normal function for that particular biomolecule. And it might be an enzyme, it might okay. be a protein, it might be a sugar, it might be a, a component in the cell wall, whatever it is affecting transport function in the cell. So any antioxidant can reduce an oxidized biomolecule, but it turns out vitamin C is probably the best at it because number one, it's a tiny molecule, very similar to glucose. So it gets penetration into all the different areas of the body, all the tissue types, into the brain, across the blood brain barrier. And also it contributes two electrons per molecule, which most antioxidants probably contribute one. Okay, so that makes it doubly potent, if you will, uh, at this function of uh, of reduction. So is that so, the, is it the only one that, that contributes to electrons? Is it the only antioxidant that does that? Is that what kind of makes it special? Also, any antioxidant will do that, but it might not do it in a particular circumstance because of the chemical nature of the antioxidant. If you have a big, huge molecule, it's not going to get where it needs to go because in order to reduce a biomolecule, an oxidized biomolecule, okay. you literally have to have contact between the two molecules. Okay. So that's where the individual biochemical configuration determines how effective the antioxidant is inside your body. If, if something can't get where it needs to go, obviously it can't do its job. So vitamin C is superior in getting where it needs to go as well as in supplying the electrons. Now, uh, you also mentioned uh, the immune system, yeah. and basically when you have strong antioxidant function, as is demonstrated by having large amounts of vitamin C in the body, it's actually well established in the literature that because of this electron donating ability that I told you about vitamin C, it helps produce interferon, it helps stimulate T cells and B cells, the two main components of the immune system in terms of having what's called a cell-mediated immunity or a humoral uh, immunity, which is antibodies. Vitamin C directly stimulates that. Okay, so uh, it's helping you, to it helps you produce more of these, um, the killer T cells, they're the ones that fight off infection, am I right there? Right, right? Uh, like for example, so in the heat speech, yeah, that's where the T cells just go way down and you lose this very potent arm of the immune system. And it helps produce antibodies, it uh, stimulates uh, phagocytes to uh, ingest foreign particles and infections. 
And in fact, this is probably one of the main reasons why vitamin C is so effective against infections. It's because of the incredible multiple pronged way in which vitamin C stimulates the immune system. Okay, so it's really, really powerful in helping to just stimulate or well support all of those aspects of the immune system absolutely yes okay great yes. and um what just out of interest what would you say would be the biggest transformation you've ever seen in either one of your own patients or someone else through taking high strength vitamin c i mean i read about some of the things in your book but just yeah just to share with the readers what amazing things does it do well by initially Got involved with vitamin C when I first worked with Dr. Hal Huggins, uh, a dentist uh, about 25 years ago. Uh, he's since passed recently, but he was at the forefront of dealing with uh, mercury toxicity and mercury amalgams and general toxicity. And I had the opportunity at his clinic to see patients that would not only get dental toxins taken out, because it's important before I go on to say that toxins are the exact opposite of an antioxidant. All right. toxins yeah. cause their toxicity by causing oxidation. Okay. okay. So keep that in mind. And then I saw these patients, they would get the toxins out of their mouth and they'd get maybe 50 grams of vitamin C intravenously every time they had uh, dental work done, as well as a broad spectrum of supplements. It was like a two week program Wow, I won't say this was the rule rather than the exception, uh, but I commonly saw uh, some MS patients who had been wheelchair bound for more than a year or so take their first steps after several weeks. Wow. Uh, I saw Alzheimer's patients show some increased clarity of thinking. I saw chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, all the aches and pains either disappear or become very minimal. And I had the opportunity working as a consultant to Dr. Huggins to continue follow up with these patients on the telephone over subsequent months, looking at new blood work, asking them how they're going. And these were changes that persisted. They weren't short term changes and then a quick relapse. Okay. When people get the toxins out of their body and get their antioxidant uh, levels up inside the body, prominently vitamin C, but not exclusively vitamin C, then that's when the magic happens, yes. Okay, so would they continue to take the vitamin C after, so you said they had their, like, maybe dental work um, sorted out, and those toxins taken out, and then after they, you know, had been discharged, were they still taking the vitamin C to get those same benefits? It's not like a one-off, take a load, and then you're done. No, uh, you know, when you're dealing with an acute infection, you can get away with, if you will, taking a large dose of vitamin C with or without an antibiotic, mm -hmm. knocking out the infection, and then going back to life the way you used to. But when you're taking it for a chronic disease, and remember, all chronic diseases cause their symptoms by increased oxidative stress. So mm -hmm. if you get a great response, Vitamin C is flushed out of the body very quickly. You don't, you, you're not capable of storing large amounts of vitamin C in your body. So when people say, uh, how long should I take my vitamin C? I say, well, number one, how long do you plan on eating? And number two, how long do you plan on living? Okay, this is in every sense of the word, the main fuel that your body runs on. And ultimately, all good diets are only good diets to the extent that they metabolize down the molecules that have antioxidant activity at the cellular level and at the molecular level. So, so yes, indefinitely. And okay. if they didn't have a bad disease, they might do well then on just a good diet, but most of them rapidly saw how quickly things could get worse if they stopped concentrating on their vitamin C and other good supplements. Okay, and let's talk as well about skin health, because that's something I'm particularly interested in and we've been writing about in the magazine. Um, I did a, a three month trial of high dose vitamin C and had some quite amazing improvements in the different measurements of collagen and elastin. So can you tell us a bit more about the mechanism of how the vitamin C actually gets into the skin or is it that it's helping 
certain other bits of the skin to build? I mean, why is it so great and how is it good for keeping our skin kind of more youthful and smooth? Well, one thing is it's good to remember, I think a lot of people just think about skin as just being the quick superficial layer that wraps up our body. And in fact, the skin, especially when you go down through the depth of the dermis, epidermis and dermis, it's the largest organ in the body. Yeah. So, so you have more volume and weight and mass of skin than you have of any other organ or tissue in your body. And as such, it's very metabolically active, okay? It's rich in nerves, it's rich in blood, uh, it's rich in structural fibers. It'll, you alluded to it already with the collagen. Uh, vitamin C is arguably important because of its antioxidant function with the synthesis of probably any new molecules, proteins, etc., but especially collagen, it's important. So when you get older and you start to have aging changes in your skin, it's the same as an aging change anywhere else in your body, which means that the net ratio of oxidation to reduction is steadily increasing in your skin as it is anywhere else in your body. And as you get more oxidation and less reduction, more oxidized biomolecules, less reduced biomolecules, then you start you start to lose the uh, the turgor, you know. The turgor is where you pinch the skin and mm, and, uh, like so if you pinch and it, and it, it bounces it right back. back again, yeah. In an old person, you you have a little pyramid of skin there for a few yeah, seconds. My hands starting to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so uh, so yes, it's uh, it's intimately related to that. Uh, the skin, obviously, or maybe not so obviously, is very important to detoxification. Mm. One of the main ways in which we get toxins out of our body is via sweating. And just because you don't see sweat doesn't mean you aren't sweating. You're sweating all the time and quickly evaporating it uh, and getting those toxins out of your body. But again, as you get older and those toxins don't get out as effectively, then they start to build up in the skin. And as you build up toxins in the skin, you're going to get all these aging uh, phenomenon oh, okay. as well. So then the vitamin C can help with the detoxing side of things as well as the collagen structure and keeping the skin smooth as it were. Kind of helps with both of those things. Yes, okay. that's correct. And um, in terms of specific conditions, I mean I sometimes get odd patches of eczema, although I have to say it's pretty much gone actually now since I've been taking the high strength vitamin C but also a good probiotic liquid. Um, would you, do you advise people that may have like psoriasis or eczema or any other kind of dermatitis skin condition? Is vitamin C going to really help them with that? Well, I don't want to sound like uh, no thought goes into this, but vitamin C helps everything because all disease processes relate to increased oxidation. And if you're taking enough vitamin C and of the correct form and the correct type of administration and dosage such that you get vitamin C to the areas that have been oxidized, you will get improvement. You know, that doesn't mean cure, that doesn't mean resolution, but you will get improvement. Okay. Now, I'm no dermatologist, but I can tell you that skin conditions have a wide variety of etiologies, a wide variety of causes. Sometimes when the cause is the fact that You've built up a lot of toxins inside your body, and there are certain areas of your body where you sweat more than others. Those will manifest as uh, cutaneous lesions as the, as the toxins get concentrated in that area. Uh, also, you have autoimmune processes that aren't necessarily directly related to the skin, but as you develop uh, antibodies uh, to different antigens that come from different things, often infections in the mouth, that too, along with everywhere else in your body, can manifest the skin skin conditions as well, so that the vitamin C there will indirectly help because it can attack the problem that caused right. the antibody reaction that's subsequently affecting the skin and the rest of the body. Okay, so yeah, yeah, then I guess it's yeah, like you said, going to the root cause of the problem rather than just okay. being a kind of topical thing it's going to the root cause and I guess that is that the same for stress as well I mean I was going to ask you later about 
um, stress, but I guess some skin conditions can be exacerbated by that. So, I mean, um, with, I guess vitamin C, let's talk about that actually, like the adrenal function. I mean, does it really help with that? I think it probably helped me with that. Well, it's important to remember that the areas, the two areas of the body that have the highest concentrations of vitamin C are the brain and the adrenals. Oh, okay. Okay. And when you have a, a fight or flight type scenario where you get stressed and everything else, much of the benefit that your body gets in the short term from the stress is not only from the catecholamines, the adrenaline and all, but also from the release of vitamin C from the adrenals. Oh, so okay. the, 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 a surge of vitamin C in your body and in your system and in your blood is part and parcel of the stress, uh, stress response. And if you've been chronically deficient in vitamin C, that's not the complete answer, but that's part of the adrenal insufficiency syndrome, where you're, you're squeezing a sponge that's already been squeezed and there's nothing left to squeeze out of it. Okay, so then, yeah, so I guess vitamin C is really crucial then, if, especially if people are kind of undergoing chronic stress or acute stress, any type of stress, their adrenals are going to be just needing loads of vitamin C, so that makes it even more important. Yeah. Correct. Interesting how it's all connected and related. Um, but just quickly going back to the skin thing, do you know, I mean, I guess this is going to be different for different people, but how long does it take and at what doses do people need to take vitamin C to kind of see, well, experience any types of improvements? Or is that a bit of a general question? <laughs> Well, uh, again, it, it depends on the age of the person and the other lying conditions. You have to remember that when you take X amount of vitamin C, that vitamin C is metabolized as quickly and as rapidly to the degree that you have unneutralized toxins inside the body. Because remember, I said the toxins are oxidants. So if you have a large amount of toxicity in the body and you take a certain amount of vitamin C, much of that is going to be lost for the effect that you're looking for because it rapidly gets consumed in this huge amount of toxins. Okay. And this is one of the reasons why there's such a variable response of one person to the next is I can guarantee you there are no two people on the planet that have the same level of of cumulative toxicity inside their body in the same areas, in the same organs, in the same cells. Mm. Everybody's different. And that's also why just any old toxin might cause a dozen different syndromes in a dozen different people because they all have different areas. So anyway, a direct answer, more direct answer to your question, for the most part, uh, you're going to have a little lag period when you're taking vitamin C and antioxidants internally, okay, for, for the skin, uh, simply because it takes a while for it to be taken up, for it to concentrate, versus, say, something circulating in the blood. I mean, there's a lot of examples in the past of Dr. Frederick Klenner, who first worked with vitamin C back in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, uh, he was able to show that people that came in acutely poisoned with different venoms, that he could very quickly get a dramatic positive response by giving vitamin C IV push in the blood because it would meet the toxin in the blood and then neutralize it before it had a chance to get into the tissues. Okay. But in the, case, in the case of the skin, uh, probably you shouldn't you shouldn't give up on getting a positive response from vitamin C until you've been taking large amounts of it for at least three to four weeks. And okay. as, as you probably noted in that study, by, by virtue of further accumulation over the time, you can still see continued additive positive benefits at two and three months down the road. Okay. And just staying with the skin for a minute then, obviously we've been talking so far about internal vitamin C. But lots of skincare creams, and I know you said you're not a dermatologist, but I mean a lot of skincare creams will add vitamin C into them and say, you know, this has got a huge anti-aging benefit. Is there 
a real remarkable difference, do you think, of using topical vitamin C? Because it's in quite a lot of products now. I mean, do you think, is that a marketing ploy? Or does it actually really help? Or are you just better off having internal vitamin C to get the benefit rather than just like, say, you know, applying it through a moisturiser? No, I, I think you can get profoundly extra benefits of vitamin C by applying it topically. Okay. You just have to keep a few concepts in mind. Uh, number one is concentration. Okay, a lot of them products put in infinitesimal amounts of vitamin C just to be able to advertise. You have a yeah. vitamin C added cream or serum or this, that, or the other. Like everywhere else in the body, the higher your concentration, the quicker and more significant your benefits will be. When you, for example, I recently have started putting together my own vitamin C serum. Oh, wow. This is something where you, with water or aloe vera gel, you dissolve... Uh, ascorbic acid up to a 20% concentration. Okay, 20%. And Is that kind of like, would you say that's the that's the minimum you need then, 20% in a No, the minimum. Probably, you probably can't get too much more in solution. Than that. okay. more, that's more the maximum than the minimum. But let me tell you, when you regularly apply this to the skin, especially areas that have lesions or discolorations or that sort of thing, you can really begin to see the magic, if you will, of vitamin C. Uh, the other thing, too, is the carriers that go along with vitamin C. Hmm. By that, I mean uh, liposomes, just like we talk about the liposome product you take orally. Even though it's not specifically designed for that, uh, because it is orange and maybe yucky, <laughs> take it externally, but just putting the liposome product directly on the skin, oh, okay. you can really get profound effect quickly. Oh, I didn't I realize you can do that. So you could actually like open one of the sachets and just rub that in. It's like a gel-like substance, isn't it? So That's right. I, I had the opportunity with three other friends to be on a uh, Caribbean vacation about whew, eight or nine years ago. And I had just become acquainted with the liposome products and live on labs which produces the product for Altria in England and sure enough all four of us uh, overdid it didn't use my sunscreen and I mean we were ruby red okay and hurting some uh. and I said hey you know I got some liposome vitamin C I'm gonna go back to the hotel and I was thinking at that time <coughs> well I'll take it orally but on the, on the walk back, I said, why take it orally? Let's put it directly on the skin. And it worked? And so not only did it work, it took ruby red skin and completely relieved the pain in an hour or less. And the next morning, the ruby red skin was normal in appearance. Wow. So there was no residual damage or burning or peeling or anything like that. Interesting point, though. One of us... Uh, had it bad on the chest and he smeared it on his chest and he didn't get any response and I'm, oh. I'm I can't figure it out because three of us feel great and then I said wait a second I said you had a bunch of sunscreen on didn't you I said yeah I said okay go up to your room soap and water wash all of that off and then apply the liposomes and then he got well oh, wow. Well, yeah. do you know what? I really wish I'd known that on my recent holiday because usually I'm so diligent with putting high factor sunscreen on. And we were in Thailand and I was under an umbrella. I thought, you know, there's no sun directly on me. I'm only going to be here for a few minutes. I got so burnt. I was just, oh, it was a nightmare. And it was all down my leg and all down my arm and everywhere. And it was so painful. I had, fortunately, I had some of the Ultrian C with me. So I took a load orally, but I never thought to put it on because I didn't know, I don't know, I just didn't think that you could do that with it. So I know for next time, I'm hoping I won't get burnt again because that was bad. <laughs> I learned my lesson. It might be cosmetically yucky, but when you're red and yeah. burning, you really don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, my skin blistered. I was so annoyed with myself because I'm usually so careful with my skin. And I didn't, I think the sun was basically bouncing off the rocks that were just near the sun lounge or the sand or whatever. It was so hot. So, well, anyway, that's a good tip. Anyway, for anyone that's got sun sunburn, you can actually apply it. So, no, that's really good to know. Um, I was going to also ask... Um, so, just, yeah, so it's basically 
you need it. So if you're going to buy a product, then would you look for ones that have a twenty percent concentration of vitamin C? I don't like know if they have brands. commercial products that have that type of concentration. I have to look. I think. Okay. I think they are. And, and so actually, I, I discovered this some. little formulation on a YouTube video. So, I mean, you can just go to YouTube and say how to prepare vitamin C serum for, for skin application. Yeah. And you'll see something along those lines. But, no, I think 20% is vastly higher so people, than what you see in most commercial skin products. So people could make their own solution then, effectively, if they just bought some ascorbic acid and mixed it right. in with what, aloe vera gel, did you say? And Aloe vera water. gel plus a little water. They also said you could use, uh, uh, I think, it's a gelatin, okay. um, or or just water, just water, and then and then you finally at the end you just put three or four drops into your ten cc's of vitamin E oil, and then uh, and then it's when you do it that way, it's it costs next to nothing. So mm. you, you you keep it in a dark bottle and. Once every week or so, you just throw it out and make another little new batch just so it hasn't oxidized too much on its own. So, okay, so we keep uh, for about a week. Would you keep it in the fridge or just no, not, uh, not, not, if you, not if you have a 72 degree abode and you have a nice dark bottle like that? No, no problem. Okay. But, I, but the fridge would be best if you want to go to that trouble. Okay. Um, so, talking then of the vitamin C, how many different types are there? Because most people, I suppose, will be, would have heard of ascorbic acid, and that's, I think, the most common type. Um, but can you tell me about the different types of vitamin C and perhaps which ones might be better suited to, to different people or different conditions? If they're, you know, Do they do different things? Well, there's a huge number of different types of vitamin C, and I'll give you a little detail on that. I'll say on my website, peakenergy.com, I have a whole list of articles, and one of them is called The Many Faces of Vitamin C, which goes in detail specifically as to what you just said. Basically, vitamin C is ascorbate. Mm -hmm. okay. Ascorbic acid is hydrogen ascorbate. Sodium ascorbate is sodium ascorbate. And then you can link just about any of the different ions to it. You can have magnesium ascorbate, manganese ascorbate, zinc ascorbate. Okay. So those are all different simple forms of ascorbate. It's really best to stick with ascorbic acid or sodium ascorbate when you're taking large amounts of it because you don't necessarily want large amounts of an associated mineral, okay? Right, Unless okay. it's magnesium. It's very hard to overdo magnesium. Yeah, lots of people now, need more magnesium. I keep reading and hearing about Mag Magnesium, I'll, I'll tell you, magnesium is more important than C for what it does. <laughs> Okay. It's, uh, they're, they're the top two. So, but as far as basic types go, uh, you have, of course, the liposome encapsulated vitamin C that we've been talking about, which even though you take it orally, because it's in these tiny little fat balls called liposomes, they get absorbed so quickly and so effectively, and then they make their way eventually into the blood and they get inside the cell without the consumption of energy which is okay. even better if, than if you take it intravenously. If you take it intravenously, it's unencapsulated. It's not in a liposome, and you need energy to pull the vitamin C inside the cell, so like robbing Peter to pay Paul. So the liposomes are very good at dealing with getting vitamin C inside the cell, and because of this, the liposomes are also sort of like a sustained form of vitamin C. I said before, regular vitamin C gets in the body and out very quickly. Right, okay. Okay. yeah, because we don't store it, like you said. So if you take the powder form, see, like if I took, you know, I had some mix up in this water, would it, how long would it take to go through me? Is it like within 24 hours? Would it flush out any that you didn't need? Or? Well, that's that. I mean, uh, if you're just taking a regular form of vitamin C like that and you want to keep an optimal blood level, I mean, you need to be taking that stuff three or four times a day. Okay. okay, so you have uh, the liposome, you have powder, as you just said. Powder is good because it helps neutralize the toxins that are forming from bad digestion in the gut, uh, as well as getting inside a large amount of immune systems, uh, immune cells, because okay. roughly 70% of the immune cells in our body are wrapped around the gut. So you get a lot in your immune system. 
They have another interesting form of vitamin C called ascorbyl palmitate, which is fat soluble. Regular vitamin C is water soluble. Ascorbyl palmitate is fat soluble, which allows it to get taken up into the cell membranes around the body and help repair cell membrane damage. And then so, you have intravenous. So, sorry, it was ascorbyl palmitate. Can you say it again? A scorbill? A scorbill. A scorbill palmitate. Okay. Right. So that's the type of vitamin and, and, C that will go into all, fat. Right. And all these are contained in details and articles uh, on my website. And people, there's you know no charge for the articles. People can just look at that information as they want. Okay. And so, because obviously, I mean, I've heard of the intravenous vitamin C. I think that's quite an expensive option for people. I don't think many people would probably, and also having an injection isn't my favorite thing in the world. So um, it's probably, unless someone desperately needed that, I suppose, and they were, it was a life-threatening situation, in which case that's the quickest way, obviously, to get into your body. I'm guessing really that, you know, buying the powders and having the liposomal or liposomal versions is going to be more cost-effective for people. And would you advise that, um, I mean, especially, say, for skin health, would you say a combination of powdered and liposomal as well, or is one no, better that would than the be other? Absolute. I mean, I know you said the liposomal one is good because it's in the fat, it's in the kind of jelly liquid, and that's able to get into your cells more quickly. But then you said yeah. something about the powder being particularly good for the gut health and immunity. That's right. Uh, one of our main sources of toxicity in the body is poorly digested food that rots and putrefies rather than gets digested. Okay, and nice. <laughs> with toxins eutrophies, those toxins are some of the most potent toxins on the planet. So you can directly neutralize those toxins, and also you increase the motility in the gut, and people that tend to be constipated move more easily. So you not only neutralize toxins, you eliminate them before they get absorbed as well. So okay. you get a lot of good things by taking what's called bowel tolerance doses of sodium ascorbate or ascorbic acid on a daily basis. Mm. And how can people, well, is that just a case of keep taking it until you notice that you need to go to the toilet more frequently? I presume that's what bowel tolerance Right. Uh, and, it, and it is an individual thing you need to determine. Some people will take two or three grams of vitamin C and then have diarrhea 20 minutes later, others can take 10 or 15 grams, others might take 20 or 30 or 40 grams. A lot of it has to do with how toxic is your body right. because when you have a large amount of toxins in your body, it appears that a greater amount of the vitamin C gets absorbed to deal with those toxins, whereas when you have less toxins in your body, a smaller amount of vitamin C gets absorbed and more of it way more of it makes its way down to the colon, which pulls fluid in and causes the uh, the loose bowels of the diarrhea. But most people can figure out a dose where they can get close to the bowel tolerance, but not hit it if they don't want to deal with the diarrhea. Personally, I will tell you, I I did it a bowel tolerance dose with uh, with the watery diarrhea for several years. It's a great it, it's a great health habit. But you do need to be, obviously, in a situation where going to the restroom yeah. is easy. So if well, you guess, if you're crowded office and this out of the other, not right. a good idea to do. Wait wait until the weekend. You know, but if you're working at home on books or this out of the other and you have your own situation set up, no problem. Well I guess that's uh, maybe a good tip for people to know too if they are constipated and I'm sure lots of people are that actually one way to deal with that that and I think magnesium as well that will also oh, yeah, if you take too much magnesium will do a similar thing I mean, when you get a colonoscopy that's what you get magnesium citrate oh, okay. you know to clean you out so no uh, uh, vitamin C and magnesium are probably the two most uh, bowel activating supplements there are if you will so in terms of um dosing then, is it possible to overdose on vitamin C? Are there any side effects? No. Other, other than the loose stools, but you know, could anything bad happen? You know how effective vitamin C is and how badly it dents the pharmaceutical market because you just see the same articles written month after month, year after year, where they try to raise concerns 
I even saw an article the other day that said vitamin C, high dose vitamin C can be bad for your liver. It's quite the opposite. Nothing could possibly be better for your liver okay. than to take large doses of vitamin C because the, the liver is sitting there dealing with detoxification. And your greatest assistant to detoxification is vitamin C. But I will say this, and it's important for the listeners or the viewers to know this. There has never been a set or defined level of toxicity of vitamin C. In other words, there's no amount of vitamin C that's ever been found to be uniformly toxic, no matter what the level is. Wow, now, think, that's interesting. Think this. If you sit down and you have like three or four gallon jugs of water in front of you, you're sipping some water right now. Yeah. If you... If you sip several gallons, sip. If you gulp several gallons of that over the course of the next hour, uh, six or seven hours later, you'd be dead. Now, all you did was drink water, but you killed yourself. Mm. Does that make water poisonous? No. In the technical sense of the word, yes. Okay. Obviously, but there's no dose of vitamin C that's ever been found to cause any problem at all. I mean, you're just, uh, and if, you're, if you're taking it orally, yeah, you're limited by loose diarrhea, but all the only side effect of vitamin C is feeling well in good health because you're just putting more fuel inside your cells. Mm -hmm. Now, they talk about renal toxicity, kidney toxicity, vitamin C, and just about any other thing on the planet can be toxic beyond a certain point in a person that's not excreting properly in the kidneys. Okay, so that's not anything unique to vitamin C. But when you have normal kidney function, not only is there really no chance of damaging your kidneys, they have a whole host of studies that show that rather than cause kidney stones, vitamin C makes it less likely to have a kidney stone and also makes it easier to dissolve a pre-existing stone. Oh, so again, yeah, really? so that, so some people yeah. are saying that it could cause kidney problems, but yet you're saying that actually the opposite is true. And right, mostly what's causing those kidney stones are a ton of other factors, not the least of which is calcium supplementation. Okay. Never supplement calcium. Never, never, never. And we'll have to talk about that on a, a different. I reckon that could be a different, a different yes. talk. We could probably go into that. Yeah. But that's one of the primary reasons that people get kidney stones is their calcium supplementation. I mean, there's many things. You have calcium oxalate stones. There's many, many, many things other than vitamin C that supplies oxalate. Matter of fact, pregnant women have super high levels of oxalate in their urine for whatever reason, but they don't have an increase into, into kidney stones. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so it's, it, calcium is, is the factor there in stone formation. Wow, I'll have to look into that then. That's something new for me to learn today. Um, so, and I was going to ask, oh, what are, what are there, are there any other supplements, maybe like your top three or that are, that you think are really good for skin? I mean, obviously vitamin C. What are the other top two or three vitamins that you recommend or that you think will really benefit skin? And I'm sure they benefit other parts of the body too. But are there kind of key ones that you find most people deficient in or that really help? Well, your fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin E, because the, these are the ones that, that, that stay put, you know, they, and, and they get into cell membranes. I mean, a water-soluble antioxidant is not going to get into the cell membrane. And that's one of the most important things with regard to maintaining and restoring uh, good skin health is maintaining healthy cell membranes. Okay, so, you know, vitamin E, I, I will say this, uh, they, I have what I call the big four of supplements, and the, the, the most important one is magnesium, okay, and if you, once you get into the calcium thing, you'll find that magnesium is the antagonist to calcium, mm -hmm. and nearly all medical problems are associated with increased calcium levels inside the cell. So it's, and you can't have high magnesium and calcium. They're yin and yang. Oh, okay. you, if one's high, you take the other one to bring the other one down. So magnesium, vitamin C, of course, vitamin K. And vitamin K works very potently against calcification of the tissues. And then vitamin D. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, the thing about those four 
supplements, it has been well established that each one of those supplements taken by itself, monotherapy, decreases your chance of death from anything. Decreases one of those. Oh, so yeah. those are the big four. Uh, there's a lot of other good supplements to take. There's the B vitamins and lysine and proline and all these things. And it's important, you know, not to... Not to, not to take so many supplements that your stomach stays upset all day long, okay? Or that you're depleting your pocketbook too badly. So, oh, that's you know, me when, already. Well, I already spend loads of money on different supplements and things. But I like to, I like to, I don't know, I like to try them out. I like to try and get into good health. So I'm off, I'm often trying different things. But but um, but actually, yes, I probably spend too much on supplements. I'd say overall. But I guess for the regular people, if they just want to get really super healthy and have great skin, those four things you said, vitamin C, um, D, K, and what was the other one? Magnesium. Magnesium, yes. Magnesium, <laughs> I have some magnesium. So they're the super important ones. And does the vitamin C kind of help augment other vitamins too? So if you take it, does it help the action of the other ones? Does it make them more potent in some way, or is it just that they're kind of synergistic and... Excellent point. I mean, you have in your body what I call an antioxidant matrix, okay? And all antioxidants donate electrons and become oxidized, and before they can be active again, they need to get electrons, they need to be reduced before they go out and do their task. So, absolutely, it's been well established that all of these antioxidants work together, as you will use the word synergistic, mm -hmm. they help recharge the antioxidants that are at the front line, if you will. In other words, where the oxidation is, they get oxidized and the other antioxidants come in and reduce them again and they continue to have their effect. So, so yes, you have an antioxidant pool. Uh, your most important antioxidant inside your cell, glutathione. Mm -hmm. uh, glutathione and vitamin C are very, very synergistic. One working to sustain uh, reduced levels of the other. So absolutely, uh, they're, they're all synergistic. See, there's this crazy thing out there called vitamin C complex. That's a myth. It's really getting a lot of traction out there about vitamin C is not ascorbic acid because they have people that are just trying to sell products that have a lot of other things in them. So, what, so that's, was that, is that something called vitamin C complex? Is that the name of a product? Or vitamin or C that? complex okay. or whole vitamin C. I just want to say that's bunk. That's oh. ridiculous. Because we have many thousands of articles showing that vitamin C alone as ascorbic acid can do a phenomenal amount of good things. I only bring that up because... If you take other antioxidants, that's fine. You'll make the vitamin C even more effective. Okay. But it doesn't mean that vitamin C is not effective by itself as well. Okay, sure. And then, so just one thing finally for the viewers and listeners. If they just, if they think, right, okay, vitamin C, I really need to, I'm not taking any, I want to start. Um, I know you said there's no upper limit, but just as a kind of good dose to make people to for people to feel the benefits what dose would you recommend daily for people well, to start unless, out with unless you're in the very small percentage of people that are super sensitive to vitamin c like i said there's some people that'll take a gram or two and then they'll start getting the rumbling in the belly and they're off to the bathroom that's the very tiny minority you know taking something on the order of <coughs> two or three grams three times a day Okay. Uh, of either ascorbic acid or sodium ascorbate powder. And then if money is not a super big objective, taking in addition as well the one packet of alternate liposomes a day. So because that's sort of a sustained force, it gets inside the cell and the other vitamin C is getting down there and helping clean out the gut uh, and neutralize the toxins there. So that, that would be a, so a good, good straightforward approach. Right. Yeah, to have both of those. Okay, great. And um, Dr. Levy, just tell us um, tell us the name of your book again and website where people can find out more if they want to read up on vitamin C, find out more about it. Well, the book where we've talked about all of this is Primal Panacea, okay? And 
The website is peakenergy.com, P-E-A-K-E-N-E-R-G-Y.com. It has all my uh, articles on there, the ability to get the books. And I'll tell uh, your listeners this, too, because, you know, writing medical books doesn't really make a lot of money. It's The more important thing to me is get the message out. So yeah. anyone that goes to uh, a, a website called Levy, my last name, L-E-V-Y, dot, medfoxpub, M-E-D-F-O-X-P-U-B dot com, levy dot medfoxpub dot com. There's three of my books available for free as e-books. Oh, Primal wow, that's C, great. Toxic Tooth, and Death by Calcium, oh, which okay. is something that uh, I'm sure all the ladies that are worried about their skin should be worried about even more when they start finding out what they're doing with those calcium supplements. Okay, oh, well, I'll have to check that one out. That'll be my ne next on my reading list. Okay, well, Perfect. Dr. Levy, thank you so much for your time today. It's been really enlightening, and thanks for sharing your knowledge with us, and hopefully we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. My pleasure, Katie. Nice talking to you. Take care. Thank you.